Hi there, welcome back to my channel Scrap and Coffee. Are you ready to start some decorating on our land down under folio? I'm not sure if I am, but I'm going to give it my best go. Uh, honestly, there is a lot of doubt in my head <laughs> with, with this collection and with this project and how I want to do it. Uh, as you can see on my desk, uh, I've been preparing a little bit because um, there is some fuzzy cutting involved and I have to do it all by hand and I'm not the fastest, I'm not the best at it, but um, so I tried to prepare it a little bit, watch a sports game and just cut some elements out. Um, because as you can see here, we have quite some fuzzy cut elements and I was thinking that that is going to be like the highlight of this um, project. Um, but I find that very, uh, very difficult. I um, uh, a little confession of a crafter here. Um, w uh, I see quite some projects on mostly Instagram uh, that just amaze me, right? With all the fuzzy cut elements or the, the pre-cut elements, doesn't matter where they are so beautifully layered. There are some splatters, there's some structure or some texture on it. And it just looks amazing. And I'm just like, oh, I want to be able to create that. But I just know that if I give it a go, it will never be as good as the things that I see on Instagram. And I think uh, that will that is something that we all experience probably. At least I hope. I hope I'm not the only one, but I think I'm not the only one. I think most of us will experience that. But you know what? I was thinking like, let's not get overwhelmed by the things that I see on social media that look so amazing. Just give it a go and enjoy the process and we'll see what will, what will come out of it, basically. So I, I have been preparing some stuff that I think I want to use on the cover, but I'm not 100% set on because I might, I'm, I'm still thinking about, do I want to put some pattern paper behind here? Like on the back side of the front sheet of this collection, we have some six by six papers, basically some smaller patterns. And I was thinking maybe I want to use a wood grain behind it. I really like how that looks. I would cut it down so you'd only see it on the inside of the frame. And I uh, yeah, fuzzy cut it quite some elements that I want to try to layer on here with I'm going to use some chipboard or some foam dots to create some dimension. Um, so that is, I, yeah, you can see I've, I've fuzzy cut quite a lot. So I just have things to play with. I uh, decided on a title. So I can use this one that's also on the wood grain, but also somewhere on the papers I have something that looks more like this, a little bigger. That says land down under, so one of those two it's gonna be. Some things that I can use for anchoring some of the stuff. But I just want to make sure that it's not, it won't be too much. It doesn't get lost in everything, but that's, I'm going to do that last. I did select things that I might want to use on it, but I'm going to do it last because if I'm going to work on the inside and I have that all here, I'm yeah scared that I'm going to damage it because that's the other part of it. I'm like, it always looks awesome, but I always doubt about functionality of these sort of projects. But I just wanted to give it a go because this collection just screams to me, use those fuzzy cut elements. Uh, and another thing that I might use and I just, like I, I think I said it before, like this would be such a great collection if you are a layout maker, because some of the hard work is already done for you. And there is another one, like the back side of this beautiful pattern. Like if you would do those two next to each other, you have a beautiful two page layout, right? And the hard work is, I would, yeah, you can add some elements for dimension uh, and, and your photos, beautiful. But I'm thinking I might want to use this. I think a lot. I know. I always I think this. I think that. <laughs> but like I said, uh, there's a lot of doubt in my mind still about what I'm going to do with these papers. Right. This is the sheet that I was looking for. So this is the background that I might need to use. <coughs> but these cut aparts here that are probably close to three by four. Yeah, yeah, three by four. They could also fit really nice inside my frame. So that's also still um, an option. And here I, right here, land down under. So that might also be the title. So if I wanna use this pattern, 
I will probably sacrifice this bottom part here for it. Try to make sure that I keep this here for using this side. But um, yeah, with, with uh, filming the front cover, I might do that in process video or I might do that in another video. I want to start with the inside. Um, the frame is still not stuck down, right? So I want to start here on the waterfall element and I've been through the papers and one of the options is this paper. Uh, where I might cut a piece to go here, even a strip to go on the spine and then a piece to go on my first flap. But this will go over it and I want to do something on here as well. And then that will hide probably a little bit what's happening here. So I'm not sure if that's the best option. I could also use this side here. That could be nice. But then I came across... And I have to be uh, going through these papers a little bit to find what I'm looking for. This one, where I thought I can use, I can cut it in half to six inches and then cut it to size here to go on this piece and then use the bottom part over here. Might even turn it around to have that go there. And I think that's the best the best option so uh, this is five and a quarter I think yeah, so I would need to cut that to five and this is five and a half so if I am going to cut my sheet to I think I'm going to cut it just like to five and a half this way and then I can cut it to six and cut both pieces to size Okay, so this is what it was, and I have two pieces now. I need to cut it down a little bit more, right? But I can place that one here, and then that kind of turns out nice. And I can add more on my belly band if I want to. And then this one I can place here. And I need to keep my magnets in account. My magnets are here. So if I want to do like a small photo mat or something, I can maybe do that here. This one is too big, but I could add something there. Try to not cover up the magnets too much. So I'll see if I can make that work. So I'm going for a 1 8 inch border all around. Uh, I have been in doubt about inking this. Because I feel that it needs something, but I don't know if I have the right ink for it. I have some antique linen, but I'm afraid that's going to be too yellowish on here. Well, maybe it won't be too bad. Let's see what else. Let's see what this um, will give me, this antique linen. I bought it recently, but... Well, actually, I think it might work. If I just do it lightly, I, I just feel that it's too naked if I don't ink the edges. And it doesn't always have to be inked, but it needs something. So let's see, this is five and a quarter, so let's cut it to five. And sometimes I like to make the whole image continue on here, but if I would do this with this pattern, I would have basically white paper there. So I, I will choose something different to go here. So I think that will work. And this I need to cut to five and a quarter, I think. Yeah. I think I like it that way. Kind of connects these two parts here. So let's see if I ink that lightly and I'm going to start with this sheet because I'm the least committed to that sheet. That's not bad. Okay. And I need something to go here as well, right? But that, those are often the last things that I do. Okay, next up I have been preparing some photo mats. Now you don't really have to do this right. I do it basically because it just looks finished on camera. 
reasons for you to do it might be because you're trying to sell your album and it gives it more of a complete look you can instruct people on on what to do with these in my case that would be remove them and replace them with a photo um, if you're using it for yourself or you might give it to somebody that's close to you and you'll be able to explain things a little bit more maybe you want to do one or two to give an idea and then they can fill in the rest um, but what I'm going to do, so these are full size, six by four, and these are three and a half by five. I'm not going to stick it down yet because I'm not fully committed to it as of yet. Uh, so I will probably be placing my six by fours. I can only place them in portrait style. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do it like this and then have a piece of pattern paper next to it here. So when we close it, we see the pattern paper and not the photo. And um, then I would do the three and a half by fives probably here on the inside. So again, I don't see that photo when the waterfall is closed because for some reason I, I personally don't like that. But we can play around with how we want this. And what I also wanted to show you is if you don't have a whole lot of portrait style photos or you maybe you want to play some smaller photos, what we can do is get I'm going to cut one full size six by four and a half to three by four. So I have two of them. And you can place, and what I would do with this is cut maybe a slight hair off on the three inch side. So you have a nice even gap in between your photos as well. And you can do something like this or this. Or maybe you want to combine it with one of the cards that's in your collection. So you have one photo and one pattern paper card or make it a journal opportunity. So you can really play around with that. Now personally, like I said, I want to have my pattern paper show here. So I would definitely go like this. But you could also use this sizes on the inside, right? So you don't have to use the three and a half by five. You can also use smaller sizes here or Again, another full size photo on the inside, but then you can only use portraits. And yes, of course, you can also put pattern paper in and just put a photo on top. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is bulk. So I need to find a pattern that I want to use with this to go here. No, I have this sheet, but that's not really going to work. I I'm not sure that that is going to work. Maybe I can do something like this, but then I can only use half an inch strips. And I would need to combine it with something. Or place my photo mat more like this and then have another strip there. And then I could use this piece here. It would look something like that. Shall I try it? See if we can make it work. It's a little bit upside down actually. Yeah? Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. So if I'm going to cut this to six, and it might be that this photo mat here, yes, is six. So that gives me a nice guideline to where to cut. That's just where I'm going to cut. Maybe I'm going to cut a little more to this side. Yep. Okay, so I off centered that a little bit so I can keep this image a little bit centered on here. Um, I'm just trying this. Um, so maybe you want to wait with cutting papers. I just cut it up where I have it where I can use it. And I would need one, two, three, four, five. Five times half an inch is two and a half, so I can make that easily. And then um, let's, I would probably add a little bit more here as well. But if I cut it off here and then do half inch strips, I can make that work. Okay, and I left that little bit of green there. I think maybe if I can see that still, that gives me a nice barrier there. So half inch strips from this. 
and it's now three and seven eighths it's a little bit difficult to um uh, let me get a different paper trimmer for it i'm just going to use my uh trusted fiskers but i'm taking out that blade because i've used that on chipboard so i'm going to get a new blade it's going to be a little quicker so half inch strips let me recheck yeah the space that we have is half an inch but we do want to create a little bit of a border So yeah, I'm going to go for half inch strips. I think uh, that would be best. Sometimes I do 3-8, but then my flaps, they um, intend to catch onto each other. Okay, and then right here. I'm gonna try 5.8. There's not a lot of detail left that I need to take into account, so because I just feel that I need a little bit more there. Okay. Now I feel that I might want to have something here as a barrier, but I'm not sure if I even have something to do that. Just checking my scraps first, but that's not looking very uh, hopeful. So I could use maybe some, a little bit of this. I can try to cut that out or maybe I have a strip here maybe I can try this here let me cut that up have I mentioned before that I'm not particularly happy with this paper trimmer I can't wait until I have my stuff back it's on its way finally after five months waiting it's on its way so probably when we Get it here. The weight has been well. The weight that's not completely true. The time between emptying our house in Canada and getting it here would be uh, approximately six months, where normally it's like ten weeks. That can work, right? And then I can still figure out if I want to have something extra on here. But that looks pretty good. And I think that barrier just makes it that, yeah, it looks a little bit better. It's one of the things that I try to do, right? To uh, create some contrast in between my, uh, my pieces. I might need to do something like that here as well. Um, we'll see. I don't want to create too much layers because I have my magnets here. And I don't want to lose too much of the strength of the magnets. So this is what we are going to do. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> and we're going to work our way backwards. Because it's easier to line everything up. But I am going to give all of these strips a little bit of ink as well. So I need some ink close by and some wet glue close by and I am just patiently going to ink and glue all of these pieces and try not to lose the order of them. But I'm actually a little bit in doubt, well not about this project, but um, to print some photos to go in here. Because we have uh, been taking a trip, uh, it's almost two weeks ago now, it was in the weekend of 
Halloween. We had a long weekend here in Victoria. I'm not sure if that was in all of Australia. I'm not sure about that. But we, um, we had a public holiday on the Tuesday. And then there was no school on Monday. So we um, had a long weekend. Uh, and we decided to keep our daughter home on Friday. So we could leave on Friday. And we went to something that has been recommended to me by some of my followers. But uh, also my husband came home. And one of his co-workers said, that's something that you really need to do. It's close by and it's beautiful. And it's the Great Ocean Road. Which is not too far away from here. It's I think... When you drive for about an hour and a half from where I'm located, then the Great Ocean Road basically um, starts. You drive along the oceans on the... Um, it's a little bit south uh, west of Melbourne. It's, we, you go south of Geelong and then, if I pronounce that right, and then uh, you, you find the ocean there. Uh, beautiful beautiful ride we were a little bit unfortunate that we had a really rainy day when we drove up there um, but then the forecast was really bad for the whole weekend and that turned out to be not so bad we only had the problem that um, <coughs> everybody was sick so we didn't enjoy it as much as we wanted to uh, but still the, the surroundings they were Gorgeous. We wanted to actually do a little hike through the rainforest there, the Otway Natural Park, but that didn't happen unfortunately because we were a little bit unlucky with uh, our G GPS <laughs> not working and we couldn't find it because there was a road closure due to the floodings and then we couldn't find it and we decided to head back and just made a few stops on some beautiful scenes there uh, and then we were just, uh, yeah everybody was sick so we didn't try again on an on another day we just enjoyed the view we had a great view onto the ocean and the children had a lot of fun where we were uh, there were a lot of activities for the children and so they had a lot of fun even though it wasn't a trip that we planned for and uh, we spotted some koalas that are just so darn cute definitely my favorite animals so, um, but I also really, really like the kangaroos and we, where we live, we are a little bit north of Melbourne. Well, not a little bit, we are north of Melbourne. <laughs> um, we really live in what we like to call kangaroo land here. Uh, we can really spot the kangaroos close by in the fields. Um, we, I had one day where I brought my daughter to school and we were not allowed to take the entrance that we would normally take for her to enter her classroom because there was kangaroos in the fields. <laughs> That's that was something new. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really I really enjoy that. I don't enjoy the part where you unfortunately see them way 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 too much next to the road. If you know what I mean. That's the part that I really that makes me really sad. That breaks my heart. But seeing them jumping around in the field, yeah, definitely. Oh, I just bumped my camera, sorry, with my big head. Okay, I hope it's somewhat still now again. So I know it's really hard to see, but I have my cut edges of my cardstock here. And I'm going to uh, aim for an even border. I'm going to go a little closer to my folded edge here of this closure flap. Uh, something like this. And then let's see how that looks when I close this. A little crooked actually <laughs> or maybe it's just uh, my view but i feel that this piece is not really straight sometimes i have that with i don't know if it's this cardstock but i feel that it's the paper trimmer sometimes when i cut my pieces i just feel my paper gliding in it when i cut long pieces so i definitely feel it's the paper trimmer and not the paper but um yeah hopefully one more month and then i have my um my trusted big Fisker trimmer bag. <clears throat> we, uh, of course, are also awaiting our furniture. It's just, it's not just my craft supplies, right? It's also a lot of toys for the kids, our furniture. Um, so we've been living a little bit in an empty house here, but we've been pretty creative with um, how we dealt with it. And we are kind of used to it by now. I'm, I'm gonna say, 
over time I was thinking like if it's gonna take too long I'm gonna get really annoyed but no I just I think by the time that my stuff arrives I'm going to be feeling overwhelmed with all the furniture that's gonna be in the house because you just get used to to it to it being a little empty um, but don't worry we're not we're not living a difficult life or anything not at all we are um, have been very creative with how we are solving things so I did the first piece and now I can use that piece to line up uh, my other pieces right to make sure that that lines up on top to bottom that's just the easiest way to go to start at the back but we have like uh, we didn't bring all of our furniture so we have new beds for almost everybody here we only brought uh, my daughter's big bunk bed uh, that she really didn't want to get rid of so um, but we have new mattresses and beds so we are sleeping comfortably we instead of we needed a new couch so we got a new couch and we were really lucky with um, getting it um, delivered pretty quick we didn't have to wait very long on it we were really really lucky and the people in the in the store where we bought it they were just amazing helping us there and uh, we have um, what we bought was an outdoor dining set because we didn't have that and we have a really nice patio here for some outdoor dining and so we decided to buy an outdoor dining set and just use it inside until our actual dining table is arriving so we don't have to sit on the floor we don't eat on the floor or on the couch um, yeah but we are kind of in the way of having our actual furniture here as well hopefully before Christmas and especially the children they are just really missing their their toys I'm gonna try to explain to them that you know when it has to come with the boat it takes a long time but it's um, yeah that's those are concepts that are hard to grasp for a four-year-old right my daughter is a little older she understands a little bit better but also for her it's um, it's difficult because her brother and her sister they both had a birthday while we were here and of course they got some new toys right so and she her birthday is in March so she didn't and we did so not something that we normally do but we did decided to treat her with some things as well because the other two got some new toys to play with and we also wanted her to have something to play with of course so during the birthdays we also made sure she had something to make her happy and like I said normally we don't do that normally when it's somebody's birthday it's that person that gets spoiled and not everybody it's something that you need to learn in life that's how we feel about it but there are exceptions right and christmas is coming up but we hopefully by the time they uh, that's here they have their toys back Okay, so I'm just working my way. I feel that I might not be 100% perfect, but it's perfect enough. I feel that I might have been able to go a little higher, but with these strips, it's really hard to correct that. Um, I keep bumping the camera with my head because I want to get my head in and it's not working. And uh, I'm sitting down, so I'm not looking at it evenly. And th those are all things that just make you be not as perfect as you might want to be. Okay, this is the final one. I just feel that I'm slowly, well maybe I was from the beginning, I was a little lower than I could have been. Could have placed it a little higher up. But you know what? It's all fine. So, and there we have that pattern. So this one little strip that doesn't look like much. Well, this kind of looks pretty. 
it's not looking bad but it together it makes that nice continuous pattern and we can fill up these areas uh, with a photo and then add an extra strip of pattern paper there now if you don't want to do this because of course you don't have to right it's just your using cardstock you can reuse them if you really want to um, to save on cardstock and money um, but you don't really have to like i said you can do one or two and then I, what i would do is i would cut a piece of cardstock to your photo size so in my case six by four and just uh, use that one piece where you just hold it in place and you determine what you need to cut on pattern and paper right here and also when you go and stick it down you just have that as a template basically in place to place your other pieces of pattern and paper and then you use that on on every sheet so i'm using a, a repositionable glue stick this one is from elmer's it's working and i'm not sure if it's the cardstock or if it's the glue stick but it's not working as good as my uh, scotch glue stick that i'm used to using i need to work this a little bit more but it also might be the textured cardstock i'm not sure about that the white is a smooth cardstock so maybe that is a better better combination so i can remove this again right when i want to replace it with a photo uh, i can do that so i'm having some six by fours prepared with a little bit of a black uh, line on it to just give it something extra because otherwise i feel it so naked and what i might do is do the three by four as well. So you see this goes really quick and easy with this glue stick. Uh, let's see if I do three by four here, six by four, six by four. Yeah, so I'm going to do three by four there. And maybe I would do one photo then and, and some journal opportunity. Um, what did I do? One, two, yeah. So I've cut those three by fours, right? Yeah, I'm going to cut on the three inside. I'm going to cut a small hair off. You see, this is just not sticking down as well as I'm used to with my other glue stick, but it's keeping it in place, so it's not that it's not working. So I'm cutting off about a 1 16th of an inch. That's something that I need to eyeball on this paper trimmer a little bit. And then I will do those black lines quickly. I'm not worried about those lines being perfect or anything it's just to break up the white plain cardstock a little bit and I don't have my camera stamps with me I brought some stuff and and honestly when I <laughs> unpacked my suitcase here and I looked at what I brought I was really like why why did I bring this why didn't I bring that or why didn't I bring that I was really clearly not thinking straight when I um, made those decisions <laughs> But sure, you know, gave me a good reason to go shopping, right? I've been spending way too much money on craft supplies lately, but... You know... I'm not sure if there's even a thing like spending too much money on craft supplies. It's... Well, probably there is. My husband would think there is. But he's very supportive, I said that before. He always tells me, like, as long as you're using it and you're enjoying what you're doing, you know, um, go ahead. And we're not getting in any financial trouble, right? <laughs> as long as we can pay rent and uh, have the heating on and uh, have some hot water when we're taking a shower. <laughs> I can buy craft supplies. He knows that it's making me happy, so it's keeping me sane. Okay, so I, I do oh, see that one came off. It's not sticking down as good as I want to. There we go. 
So this one right here, I'm going to cut this one down a little bit further. I'm going to start with this little strip here. It's about a quarter inch this strip. So if I wanted to have it a little thicker, I could use this one here because basically what I cut up is the six by six size of this 12 by 12 sheet. So it's the same strip, only about half an inch, I think. Or I could use something like this. And there are more options, but I think this quarter inch is nice. It only didn't cut very well in my paper trimmer, so it has some rough edges. But I'm trying to hide that a little bit better with the ink. One of the advantages of ink is that sometimes you can hide those sort of things a little bit, but it depends on the color ink you're using. I think this one doesn't hide it as much as a black suit would do. I'm going to start with gluing that in place. With small strips, and they need to be a little bit more careful. They can go crooked pretty easy and slip and slide when you try to burnish them. Remove any excess glue that's coming out. And now I'm going to re-measure. I have about four and seven eighths here, so I'm going to cut it to. I'm going to try four and three quarters. See what that gives me. And then I need to re-ink, of course, four and three quarters. Okay, that's nice. I don't want this gap to be too big. I don't want that to be a full one eight inch. Okay, re-ink that edge. Yes. I'm going to remove that tape back in and I'm going to place some tape in the other direction as well. Although with these magnet sizes, I don't always do that. Don't really feel that it's necessary, but it doesn't harm anything to do it. Okay, I will put some uh, wet glue on here. So if I need to lift up the pattern paper because I'm crooked or anything, I can do that. I'll keep going off this paper. Just fill in that middle part a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to line it up here next to this strip. About a 1 16 inch gap, line it up from top to bottom as best as I can. And then because I have that magnet here, I'm going to burnish these edges and I'm going to burnish around the magnet. I don't burnish too close to the magnet because then you get that really um, obvious view or I'm not sure how to, what the correct word is, but you can really see that magnet coming through your paper, the shape of the magnet. And that's, I don't want that. So I am not burnishing too close to the magnet, just go roughly around it. And make sure that my edges and my corners have a good stick. And then, there we have it. Okay, and then like I said, I might like this pattern here because we have that brown coming back. I need to recut that edge a little bit. And I'm gonna go for like on these sort of things, personally, I don't prefer to um, go for a 1 8 inch border, even though I'm doing that throughout the rest of the album. Uh, I might even step away from that over here, but um, I like to go for a little bit of a smaller border because that just looks visually better to me. So in this case, I'm going to go for 1 and 3 8 by... Uh, let's just cut that 1 and 3 8 first. 
And I hope that's straight because that's really hard to measure out. Yeah, and let's do five and seven eighths also again for a one sixteen inch. Okay. I like that and then like I said I can add some elements on this flap later on and I, what I will do is just cut another piece, same piece for the inside as well so we just have that cover. Uh, I'm not, I'm just gonna leave it square. If you want to use corner rounders or decorative punches you can definitely can do that right. Okay so I've inked the edges and I will say that most of the animals that are in this paper collection and also some of the flowers, plants, I'm not sure, um, they, I have seen them either in the wild or at the zoo. I was, we were at the zoo this weekend and um, Werribee Zoo, I like that zoo. It's not too big, it's just, you know, you can have a nice walk there. The, some of the animals are walking around freely. Um, but you can walk around, see most of the animals and just spend the morning there. We have a membership, so we don't have to spend all day. But still have seen a lot and play. I like the size of the zoo. And it's a fun zoo to go to. So uh, while we were there this weekend and... Um, I spotted some of these flowers and I recognize them because I have been fuzzy cutting out these elements. <laughs> so um, I tried to take some pictures of them. I'm not. I didn't check yet how well they, how well I succeeded because I had to lean in a little bit because they were in some high grass and I'm a little scared to step in the high grass because, you know, snakes. So <laughs> I uh, took them from a little bit of a distance and at a weird angle, so I didn't really see what I was doing. But I am. So I might add, if these pictures turned out okay, I might add some of them in here as well. Okay, so here I have to be a little careful with my magnet again. Could have cut that a little shorter, but I didn't give it a dry fit. We have also been to the Melbourne Zoo, by the way. Um, it was on a public holiday. And the weather was really good. That It's been, I don't know, when when was it? I feel that it was when the Queen died. We had an, uh, an extra day off for mourning, or how do you say that? Um, so that was, a, that was a beautiful day. So we went to the Melbourne Zoo and we went early, luckily, because it was crazy busy. Crazy busy. When we, when we went home, like I said, we mo most of the time we just spend the morning there because then the kids start to get tired. And so um, just the morning is enough for us. Um, but they, um, it, they, there was just like a traffic jam for getting in a parking spot uh, or for the zoo. It was like, whew. But also in the zoo, it was just too too busy to really enjoy, really enjoy what what we uh, to look at the animals and all that. So I'm kind of looking at: do I want to add some of this here? Maybe I just want to add it here. I think I'm gonna do that. So let me measure this, and then I might add it there as well. Uh, so I think if I cut three quarters of an inch, that might work. Maybe I need to cut it a hair under three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to do that with this one. Just, I'm going to go one sixteenth. Wow, this is not straight. Let me straighten this up a little bit. Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, we'll see what we get. Hair under three quarters of an inch. So if I would just do that, nothing more. 
And I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going in the other direction than that, right? But I just want to keep that pattern showing a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that we need to do a lot more here. But I'm going to cut another one for the other spine, same measurement, just under three quarters of an inch. There. and just I'm just gonna cut uh, what is that so I'm gonna go 1 16th of an inch over a quarter inch that's one 3 16th of an inch oh I had to think about that one is that that feels a little big but still so I might want to do that here and it feels a little framed. Yep. I like that. Okay, so I need to cut that paper down in a little bit as well. I know, and I know I'm going slow, right? These are videos that are, I try to keep them under an hour. Sometimes they're a little over an hour, uh, but it's all in real time. I added out a little bit of the boring stuff. Um, we don't get a whole lot done, but it's real time decorating. I'm trying to take you with me and what is going through my mind, why I make certain decisions. Um, it's really hard to completely explain that, but I'm, I'm just hoping that it's, it's giving you some inspiration on how to work with some paper collections. Um, Or helping you through making that first cut. So often for me, it's making the first cut. Like I was really indecisive in what I wanted to do with this paper collection. But we made that first cut. And after that, I've made some decisions pretty quick, pretty easy. There's still a lot to do, right? I know, but... For this one, I can... I will all... Oh, I already inked that, so... I wanted to say I'm going to do the three sides that I know I'm going to use and then I will do the other one once I've got it down. So basically this, this brown wood grain pattern is the only somewhat solid pattern that can give me some contrast in this paper collection. So I'm really depending on it, using it. I knew that at the beginning that it was going to be something that I really needed in here. And because there's only one that can also make it really easy, right, with your decision making when it comes to those sort of things, because it's the only thing that will probably work for that purpose. So just like for these spines, that was an easy decision for me to use this on there. And I know that I'm going to cut into the papers that are so nicely already built up for making a layout. I'm not real. I wouldn't call myself a layout maker. I've done it in the past. Uh, I, and I'm talking about 12 by 12 layouts right now. Uh, but I'm, it's one of those things that I, I do and then it ends up in a drawer and it, it breaks. It's not staying complete. I just... Uh, don't know what to do with them basically and then maybe I should just order an, like the album where you can put those 12 by 12 layouts in but uh, I feel that's not going to be something that I will be doing a lot so I do try but also lately that kind of I didn't really keep up with it Yes, I have some six by uh, six by <laughs> six by eight binders for some six by eight layout making or some pocket pages for documenting some highlights, mostly for my children. But also that lately got a little bit. Should pick that back up again because it's fun for them to go through those things and for the memories. This needs to go lower so i'm doing something dangerous here but i wanted to stick this strip down first so i know how to cut it down uh, but i'm basically using this piece to kind of line it up with the rest so from top to bottom 
but you go wrong with that pretty easy and I feel that I have gone wrong a little bit with it but we'll see and then it's gonna give it's gonna give you a crooked gap here if you want to put this straight still so we'll see how I did but it's a little bit dangerous it's better to just go from one side to the other but I always want to measure how to cut this down so I'm gonna cut it down to five I have five and one eighth of an inch left see what that gives me yeah I can make that work okay it's not too bad it's not too bad and if you really have like a crooked gap in between your pieces because you placed it a little off you can always use a little embellishment or something to um, cover that up right so again I'm starting with lining it up here to create that gap now I could have done a strip here as well but then I felt it would have been like too much framing happening and I'm going to cut another six by four so I can burnish here a little bit more because we made those magnets sink into the chipboard if you have seen my uh, second video for this project there is a playlist for it um, well actually it's the playlist latte projects but it's the second project so you would have to scroll down I'm not sure maybe the fifth or the sixth video in the playlist it will be the first video for this project but you can see that on the titles uh, so that's synced in there so I can burnish over the magnets a little bit more. I'm going to cut another 6x4 down to 3x4. So I could make a little photo opportunity here but like I said I want to take my photo, my magnets in account. I could also do a landscape one. Have that in between there. But I would probably need to make a little background with this with the pink with the rose pink and of course I don't have to do this right now I can also think about it later I can also use like one of these cards here um, then you would lose a photo opportunity because I would not make this into something that I can open up because that's going to really interfere with this magnet strength here for now it's still fine but I don't want to interfere with that too much um, there are there is no animal on here so we can I have still have a lot of fuzzy cutting to do but we can see if we can add something like that on here I can also cut the photo size even further down and embellish that a little bit more but always keep the magnet placement in account there maybe that's not the best option i intend to go for the koalas but there are so many more i have some beautiful birds that i could use here so I, i'm going to think about that i'm not going to spend too much time on this video in uh, figuring that out right now i will come back to that for here um, what I will be doing is like I showed you I will probably be using mostly the 3x5 here in landscape so I have landscape and portrait options and um, the 6x6 what I showed you well these are not the well I can use this one so I could cut that up and use a strip of that right here under it those are really good things to use those patterns on I'm not really able to use this I think that would look a little bit weird if I use that but yeah this is from the front sheet so that's why I said not the best example but I have another sheet this one and here you know I could use this bottom part here to go under a photo I could use this top part and just turn it around or place it above a photo um, I can play with this one I really like this image and I really want to see if I can do something with it because it's like the whole of Australia I don't want to cut that up and lose um, so right now when I look at it I know what, what it is and if I cut it up then you lose that you don't know what it is in one look at it so these are things that I'm going to do last first I want to worry about 
my pocket here on this side. Because I need to think about, is there an image that I want to use here? Is there a pattern that I really want to use here? So, um, yeah, we haven't done a whole lot in this video, but I think I'm going to break it up again in several videos for it. So in the next video, uh, we will be worrying about this stack pocket here, making some photo mats and some fun stuff to go in here. And then... Um, last but not least we are going to work on our cover and what i think i mentioned it but i really want to keep it pretty clean on the outside cover pattern paper wise i'm not going to cover this all up in pattern paper i just really love the color that i've used here of course you can you can wrap your spines everything but i'm going to try to keep that clean i will add something here but i won't go any further than this where the, my front flap comes so you will see that later on as well. So I'm sorry it was more talking and uh, not a whole lot of decorating in this video, but we got a good jump start and making some decisions will be easier from now on. So I hope you're enjoying it and uh, I would love it if you would join me in the next video. So for now, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.